Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read the Bible. Luke 22. Luke 22. To 29. 22 verse 29. Luke 22. Is it 29? 28. Jesus said, But ye are they that have continued with me in my temptations. And I appointed you, I appointed unto you a kingdom, even as my father appointed unto me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And ye shall sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has asked to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. But I made supplication for thee, that thy faith fail not and do thou when once thou hast turned again establish thy brethren can you see that verse there amen hmm? amen look at, at this one and he said unto him lord 33 with thee i'm ready to go both to prison and to death you see that verse there and he said unto him, Lord, with thee I am ready to go both to prison and to death. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't be surprised why I read all this. I just wanted to know the whole story. But what I want to talk about is a statement. Your faith must not fail. Tell your faith must not fail. If you can read here, you see it was Jesus speaking about what will happen. He said there's going to be a challenge to the life of all of them. And he ended up speaking this, but Peter, who was very close, he showed that there are things that can make someone to fail. There are two challenges that can make your faith to fail. Number one is prison and death. Prison and death. He said, I'm ready to go to prison even to go to death. That was Peter's answering. But I want to show you what Jesus said. The first thing he said, you people, you continued with me when I'm facing temptation. Therefore, you are worthy to be appointed for the kingdom. What Jesus was saying was what I was going through was supposed to have made you to turn back. For you to continue it shows that you want to be with me. He said, what I went through makes me to say I'm appointing you to where I'm going. Can you see when Jesus speaks this thing, remember you once spoke the word and say, you know, uh, I'm praying for these disciples. Jesus said, okay, they will fail, but even before that, he said in the book of John that I'm praying for all of them that, that I must not lose all of them. Remember, Jesus never lost 
all these disciples. He wanted to face the cross alone. So that is the same thing when he said, I prayed for you so that your faith must not fail. Let me say it again. Jesus said, I have prayed for you so that your faith must not fail. Because remember, I have appointed you when I was going through problems, you stick with me. But what I did now, I've prayed for you so that you must not fail. Where? To reach where I'm going to appoint you. He said, when now you are restored, you must do what I'm telling you. Do your assignment. Strengthen others. In other words, Peter was a core person among them. And I remember the time when, you know, after Jesus, I mean, was resurrected. It was not easy for them to believe that he rose. Why? Because they saw what he faced. First of all, say, Jesus wants to appoint you if you can continue. Listen, the reason why our faith challenges are too much around us. There are many temptations that makes our faith to fail. I don't know if you're hearing that. But if you continue, there's something that will happen. Let me just show you another scripture maybe. Let's read this one. In James 3, Jacob 3. From verse 1 to 2. Uto, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, if a man is Adakamutu. not stumbling in a weight, that man is a perfect man. What is the meaning of that? It means that when a faith fails, you change what you said. You change what you said. Can you see, you can't be perfect if you are altered by challenges. You remember what Peter, Peter said, I will die with you. I will go to prison with you. But when the situation came, he said, I don't know you. I don't know him. So now, you become perfect when you face temptations and you find that you don't change on what you said. So whatever challenges you may be, they are there for you to change on what you said. Today you are here in Charis. Charis. So after all those challenges, you say, I don't want to be in Charis. To show that a man can still change. I don't know if you're hearing me. But God wants us to be like him. Challenges left and right. You say, I'm not going anywhere. A Christian's that will never have faith that will fail. Is a Christian that will never change statements. Do, do you know why you change statements? Say, I love you. Tomorrow I hate you. It's because you are a man. And your faith fails. We need a Christian who does not have a failure in faith. Who say, come what may. I believe God said it. Let me say it. I believe God said it. Come what may. Come what may. Come what may. I believe God said it. I believe God said it. I believe God said it. If he say, I won't die poor. I'm not looking at my poverty. I'll carry on speaking faith where I'm going. 
I won't speak my presence. Because my faith is not faith. I don't know if you're hearing that. The reason why people altered on their faith. Their faith fluctuates. It's because they cannot handle the situation. We need to have Christians who say, Come watch me. Christians who can be like Elijah. They say there's no cloud, but the rain is coming. Christians who can speak something which people are not seeing until they but see but it. They because they believe in, in the, the one who created things. And they trust him. And they, not, they fail not in their faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at James 1 verse 4. That's where the Bible says, Let patience have its perfect way so that you may be perfect and entire lacking nothing. Lacking in nothing. What is patience? Patience is there to answer time. Patience when you have it, time doesn't matter. So here the Bible says you must have patience. When you have patience, it brings perfection. The reason why many people can't fail is because patience is enough. They are seeing what they are seeing. There is no time set that can change them on whatever they say. If they believe that God will do it, they will do it. Time is going, no, I believe. Hey, friends are succeeding. No, they cannot change on what they said. Tomorrow, I'm a member of Charis. Tomorrow, I'm another member of another church. I remember many people well, after God bless them in Charis. They say, Charis will never leave. Very soon, you'll find them somewhere. Because they will be challenged to live to change what they say. But when your faith is established, that faith will be remaining forever. Can I say this to you? The reasons why people change what they say is a challenge. Challenge Tell somebody, say, the reason why you change on what you say you are lacking patience. And patience when it's there it cancel time set. Can you tell me when patience is there it it cancel time set. Do you know that there's nothing called night? There's nothing called night. And there's nothing called another year. Like now you say you celebrated that you are on another year. It's somebody who say this is another year. Before God one day is equals to 1,000 years. You can just live 1,000 years. And you know what is interesting? Many people think that they are living 1,000 years. I mean, if one day is equals to 1,000 years, how many years you have before God? So now you look at the calendar. You look at your ID. You look at your friends around. You forget what you said. Which you believe. It is God at the end. Who can establish you. On what you have said. Don't change. Because of your situation. Tell him don't change. What you believe in. Because of your situation. So patience must be established. Let's read one scripture. All right, look, look eight. Look at eight. Verse 40 to 42. 
40 to 52. I want to tell you what happened there. Can I tell you? Here, it's a story we have read several times. On that story, the ruler of the synagogue despise all the odds. He said, I'm losing my daughter. And uh, we are talking about Jesus. Everybody talk about Jesus, but to go to him publicly is a shame. The Bible says, he came publicly and he fall on Jesus and worship him and say my child is at the point of death please I believe come to my house you heal my child but Jesus said let's go you know Jesus was like a a very flexible person he just said huh now let's go. But, okay, we can't talk about the lady he met on the road. Who had issues of blood. That lady also, she received, but it was part of encouragement to the ruler, but also discouragement to the people who were around. When Jesus was going, he could still heal whoever is having faith. When the woman said, yes, I, I, I'm healed. Jesus said, somebody touch me. Jesus said, no, 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 don't make noise. We are, we are touching you. All of, all of we are touching you. Even we are touching you. He says, no, somebody touch me by faith. Okay, yes, okay, the woman came out. Hey, I'm a sad and actually, After I'm Jesus, Jesus finishing addressing the woman, your faith has made, has made you whole. The story came from the ruler's house. So he said, Don't trouble the master. I mean, it's over. Jesus looked and said, Hey, Jesus. Let me remind you. You remember the worship. You remember when you kneel down. I'm still on what I say. Don't lose your faith. Your faith must not fail by this story. I'm the one who said, let's go to your house. Can you see Jesus when he said, let's go to your house? Even when you hear a bad story, he will ah, encourage you, let's go. Jesus. But the story was, please, already the situation is worse now. It's, it's worse than the healing. Now it's death. But Jesus said, carry on believing. Don't lose faith by what you are hearing. Remember the act of worship you have done. Remember the words I spoke to you. The words was, let's go to your house and let's carry on. Despise what you had. Many of times when we hear something, it makes us to die on the road. Our faith drops down. And we lack faith. But here, the man was encouraged and the miracle came. Can I tell you this? How many people here today when you were coming here? you found that you were discouraged. But still you came. Because what is important, people want to affect your faith by, by hearing the negatives. But you carry on saying, I'm going, I don't care. And because you are here today, that faith will produce the best. If you believe, shout hallelujah. 
Testament say my faith has not yet failed. That's why I'm here. Sometimes whatever you hear, don't ever think it's just there. Or you just heard it. It's just to stop you where you are. So that you must not believe more where you are going. I see someone here. God is taking you somewhere. I say God is taking you somewhere. Your faith must not fail by what you are hearing. Tell about your faith must not fail by what you are hearing. You know, sometimes it won't come like the way you're expecting it. It can come by the people you love most. I mean, if you remember Job, why only one person will escape to tell Job? We were there. I'm the one who escaped. If I'm Job, I will ask, how did you escape? You were supposed to be killed also. Because many, many reports that we are hearing are there to weary us. It Satan will bring a report to Job so that his faith will fail. Or his Job will say, the Lord has given and he is taken. So he's the Lord. Another one came and said, hey, all the camels and all of us were there. The lightning hit and all people died I'm the one to report. Sometimes we need to cancel those reports and we carry on believing. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, Whatever you tell me, must encourage my faith. I don't want my faith to fail. Because I'm going somewhere. Can you tell your neighbor again? Yeah. Tell your neighbor what I said. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't You're not listening. Say hey. When are we? Sometimes you must cancel the report. Because they might be coming. Which are negative. To cancel where you are going. Tell your neighbor. They the day you hear people didn't come to your church. Preach like there are thousands. The day you hear that, you know, you are being insulted where you are working. Believe like something is about to happen. Whatever you see which is opposite is speaking miracle that you expect. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, must never affect your faith. Don't allow your faith to fail. Because God is up to something. Don't allow your faith to fail. Because God wants to do something. Normally, when and God wants to do something, the challenges becomes worse than the challenge. The challenge is the challenge. And you find rejection is worse than it. Sometimes you surprise. I thought everybody is standing with you. You find nobody standing with you. When your faith is challenged. God will never allow anybody to beg you. Up. 
Because it's only your faith that is required. No encouragement. No advice. Nobody around you. But him alone. And when he's there, if you hold him, carry on not failing, you will see the best result. I prophesy someone who says to today, something will happen in your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Okay, let's read Colossians 3 verse 9. <laughs> As you know, why people lie? Why about to Can you ask your neighbor again? Why people lie? Read that verse 9. You say what? Read that verse 9. Le sikela furana kamaka. Le be baba apuchero moto. E motala. Le ditero chagawe. Yeah. You know why you lie? That's for why le bolela maka. Because lies maka are opposite of faith. Ke nto ya u fapana le tumelo. Lie and truth are, are not Lie opposite. Lie is opposite of faith. So when you lie, you want to prove to someone that your faith is working. Lie is to protect your ego. That is why lie, once you lie, you belong to the devil. That's once why you have faith, you please God. Whatever that is happening to us, most we, of the time, we, we love to lie. Just to, just to prove a point. Just to prove a point. For, for example, many of us here, when we meet challenges. Even when we are feeling pain, we need to prove that we are okay by life. We need Christians who say, I don't want to lie. I try to protect myself like everything is fine. But I believe in Jesus. I know that you will change the situation. Because lies bring the devil. Faith bring our Lord Jesus Christ to bring the way. So we must not lie to each other. Because remember, for your faith to work, your past must be the past. You are a new creature. You have taken off the old man. I don't know if you're hearing that. Your faith will never work with the old man. Your faith will never work with the old man. If the old man is still controlling you, forget about your faith, it will fail. In other words, your character shows that there will be no results. I was telling people that the Bible shows that there's a growing faith. There's also growing faith, common faith, temptation faith. You cannot receive anything on temptation faith. When, when you are still facing a challenge, don't ever think something will happen. Overcome the challenge first. And then you will go to strong faith. Once you have got strong faith, when you use it, you will go to victory faith. You cannot just say, okay, I've got common faith. Everybody has got faith. We are all Christians. Growing faith, yes, we have got the way to grow. But when you are challenged in your temptations, that's where now you are supposed to prove if you have got strong faith. Because when you are proved there is, then you can believe something to happen. God will never allow you to receive when you are still battling with a mere problem. 
are still battling, worrying about the challenge. Oh God, oh God, God, God will never allow you. He wants you to overcome it. If you can overcome it, you can begin to believe. When you believe now, something will happen. The moment you are sustained, speaking the truth, no natural man or the old man controlling you. Satan bring this, you say, hey, I'm, I'm saved. saved. My past is over. I'm a new creature. I can't do what I used to do. I do. No, I can't go back. I still believe my God. He's a, a God of his word. His promises are yes and amen. I'm not going back. If you do that, you are bound to reach somewhere. That's where strong faith comes. Do you know why Christians today we are so much focusing on gifts than faith. We are so much concentrating on gifts than faith. Because gifts you want to use it. You use the gift to get something. But faith makes God to take something and give you. Most of the time we, we want to take things by our own. We don't want God to give us. And that is why we have got many things that we don't need. Because we got them to ourselves. You know when I was praying yesterday. I could hear the Holy Spirit say it. Can you see? When you minister. And it's yourself. You might be getting things I don't want to give you. But when you minister, it is myself. You get things that I want to give you. And this makes you to be more content. Fulfilled. Fulfilled. Most of the time, we are not fulfilled. I don't know if you are hearing that. Are you fulfilled with what you have? No. You know why? Because you are developing strategies of getting wrong way. And that wrong way of getting things you want to be popular. You want to have materials. You want to have money. Faith graduates you to maturity and puts you to where God wants you to be. So that you become flexible to the head of the spirit. Tell them about faith graduates you to maturity to maturity. And when you are matured, you become flexible in the hand of the Holy Spirit. So God can do whatever he wants to do with you. You don't create yourself. He creates you with a purpose. So when you are in his purpose, the flexibility of the hand of the Holy Spirit will create you to be what God wants you to be. And you will enjoy life no matter what. No one can stop you if you reach that level. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. must not fail. Jesus said, uh, Peter, after you are restored, go and strengthen your, your brothers. Because I have prayed for you. It takes grace to reach that level. If not, we will protect ourselves with the lies. We will make people to believe we are servants of God. Christians, bishops, bishops apostles, prophets, prophets, pastors, pastors we will, will make people to believe what we are not. I don't know if you hear me. Because that is the lifestyle we are developing. A Christians who have got faith, whether he has been stationed to whatever position, he is a more than a conqueror. But now, a challenge that is coming to you is there to check. Are you sure you still have a relationship with him? Because many of us today, we 
Our focus is no longer his relationship. It's not to be in his presence. But it's to receive what we want. And and we cannot get those things. But faith, take you there. Where what you will receive. Nobody will take it from you. When God gives you, it's like you are created with it. You are tailor made with it. I see something coming to you. Nobody will take it from you. Tell everyone, I see something coming to you. And nobody will take it from you. Look at this, Numbers 23, verse 19. You see. A man's character. It's not like of God. But when we have God, we are different. Man's character. Look at that verse there. It says, man's character. Can you read that in English, Mama? It says what? Numbers. Numbers 23, verse 19. Verse 19. Yeah. God is not a man that he should lie. Uh-huh. Nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good and fulfill it? Come on, read that verse again. I want you to read that verse seriously. God is not a man that he should lie, mm-hmm. nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will not do it? Oh, has he spoken and will not make it good and fulfill it? I think today this is our cry. Of proving that we have God. Everybody, everybody is trying to prove we have God now. If I prove that, I say tomorrow it will rain. God cannot lie. He spoke with me. And there's no rain tomorrow. I began to say it's because of your sins. That's why it didn't come. It means it's a character of a man. Man changes. Man can just say, you know, uh, next year. I'll be having a bus. When next year come, next year I fit her. No, you don't even have a bicycle. You don't even have a next year I'll be having a bus. February next year. February God told me I'll be having a bus. Next year come, you don't even have a bicycle. When we meet you, oh. maybe we, when we meet you, we find you in prison. Maybe when we meet you, we find you in prison. We find you in prison. We are going to see someone there. Maybe we find you in prison. We meet you there. We are going to see someone there. Who's arrested? We find you 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 there. I mean, people are accusing me of rape. Uh, are you sure? Yeah. I don't it know. Kamot. They say I stole. Oh, oh, oh they don't have a bus now. That's why you stole. Because many times we try to help ourselves to produce what we said so that people must believe in us. Can you see helping yourself? Oh, oh, next year. Our next year. Before next year ends, next year is so fail. I'll be doing the wedding. Eh? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. When? Okay, November. Ne, right. ka November. When November comes, November. Because you are a man, you have a character of life. And and God is not in you. When we meet you, November. We found there's nothing. We told you, yes. God so told you. What is happening now, in November, November now? November now? November, you would November is not happening. Okay, no, maybe it's because I didn't live right. No, if it's it's God, it must happen. If God is with you, can you speak what God is saying? Tell if God is with you, 
whatever you say, it will come to pass. Do you remember what the Bible says? Well, said, Bible says God never allowed the ways of Samuel to fall to the ground. He had faith. You know the problem is now, we are leaders without faith. We have got titles without faith. Our faith is failing. Our faith is without faith. We are pastors 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 Whatever we say, we just speak. Nothing, Nothing happens. Happens. I wish from today you don't talk anything. Because you know what? When you talk, remember, people are watching. They are close, they are hearing you. Oh. Yeah, it will mm, happen. Okay. Eh? And they write the day. So, a Christian must be challenged. So that he must change what he said. He says, Good as you feel pain, but you believe that you are healed. When the pain strikes, you say, hey, I'm healed. Strike, I'm healed. Strike, I'm healed. Such Christian will have results.